Um, so, uh, well, I guess, did we, did we need to cover anything else before we jump right into it, or? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're just actually starting the topic early for one. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to get on top. Um, okay, so let's, then let's just jump right into it. No, no cold open necessary, because, uh, there's really only one thing to talk about this weekend, which is, uh, which is the Anthem demo. So people have already seen you play. Yes. Um, I guess that's probably the best place to start because I've watched a little bit of the stream. I popped in for a second in the chat and then I went back and watched a little bit of it after I had played. But um, since folks have already seen you play, do you want to just kind of give like a brief summary of what happened and your thoughts? So um, I played for about, I think it was like the, the time for the stream was two hours, 20 minutes. Um, the first 30 minutes, we're just trying to log in, which I honestly, I expected that. I'm not surprised, nor was I upset by it. Because like, no matter how much you plan for um, people signing in to your servers, it just never mm-hmm. goes according to plan. Like, I don't know. Right. I expected that. So um, after 30 minutes of just pressing like connect, 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 that, then I was finally in. Um, and then there was about 30 minutes of me just like wandering around Fort Tarsus because I just found it really interesting. And I, 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 I really liked it a lot. I think the setting is beautiful. Um, there was a lot of things to interact with, even though in the demo, uh, you couldn't actually interact with any of it. Um, <laughs> There's also a lot of things to not interact with for the demo, but. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So it's there. It also really felt like, um, Fort Tarsus could be a lot bigger than what we already have like there was a lot of gates that looked like you could walk behind there was even one codex entry behind a gate that i could almost interact with so i i feel like maybe when the full game comes out you'll slowly be able to open more fart 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 (laughs) tarsus fort tarsus um so that's just a guess anyway um then i actually tried to get into the suit uh, and go out, and then I guess I got the infinite loading screen uh, glitch, so I had to reopen. But it, it at least uh, I remember it opening fairly quickly compared to the first half, um, but there were still some issues. And then I finally got back into the world and actually started playing, and I decided I wanted to play solo. Um, but no, I think solo was very doable. I just had to like learn how to play. I didn't actually... I, great, I was playing on easy, but... Um, no, I thought it was very doable. I thought the gameplay was fun. I was really bad at flying, but I think it's something that I could get better at once I once I get a hold of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do think the controls are a little bit wonky, but they've also talked about how they've actually been working more on that, and it's better in the final build. Um, yeah. And so I guess that's one thing. And then I, <clears throat> at least for streaming, then quit and then i don't know if you want to talk about my experience later in the day when i was playing with michael and my a friend of mine well i guess to before we delve because i think that is similar to my own experience of like i had my early day experience and then i had my late day experience and i don't know if that's necessarily for the same reasons but it's funny you mentioned that because the same thing happened to me yeah <laughs> Couple couple of things I want I want to touch on. First of all, um, let's just talk more about Tarsus because I I watched the the beginning part of your stream where you seemed really um, taken with it, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that just like planted a seed in my brain already, uh, which is what I was trying not to have happen, but <laughs> it probably would have happened anyway because I love environments, I love like environmental storytelling and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So when I first got into it, I had the same reaction. I was just like, I want to poke around every nook and cranny. I want to find every codex entry that I can. I made a video about one of them because I found it super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, just just talk more about Tarsus. Like, what are your thoughts? What what did you notice? What stood out to you? I, I, I think what stood out to me most is that it really did feel like I was walking in a big city, you know? Like, um, mm-hmm. you walk around Val Rayo or any of the other cities in any other Bioware game. It, like, it, it feels a bit small. Like, um, I, I would say it, it's, it almost felt like um, walking... I God, I'm, gonna, I'm not a Mass Effect nerd very much, so I can never remember the name of it. But, like, the big old space fort that everyone goes oh, to. Oh, the Citadel. The Citadel, yeah. <laughs> when you walk around the Citadel at first time, you're like, wow, this is huge and big. But it felt like a better version of that. I don't know how to best describe it but it was definitely a similar version of like whoa <laughs> this is cool i i liked how it it has a, it fort tarsus and maybe anthem in general had a very um middle eastern feel almost which like i know uh is a bit unusual but i i, I kind of liked it because it was definitely like you don't really see a lot of shooter games with like that kind of decorations and 
mm-hmm. stuff like that. Or maybe you do. I don't really play them that often. But um, <clears throat> no, yeah, I, I do wish there was more things to do in Fort Tarsus, but I also feel like they might be there. I just couldn't interact with them in the demo. Yeah, I, well, I agree with your statement also about doors that are closed. It looks like maybe that either A, it's planned for the full launch, or if it's not, it would be, I imagine it'd be easy enough to make it as DLC. Um, there is also a codex entry about the expansion of Fort Tarsus. So ah. um, that seems like that that is sort of a natural thing that they've already potentially set up in the lore. Um, I don't think it's as big as a Citadel, for sure. Um, I mean, I know it's not as big as a Citadel, because oh, yeah, a Citadel yeah. can take you a while. But also, like, on on the size comparison, I'm torn, uh, which is probably going to be something that I say a lot during this episode. It's like, I'm of two minds, where, specifically on Tarsus, pleasantly surprised with the size and the depth and the and just the conversations and the things that you can poke around and look at but also still kind of wanting. Like, I found it bigger than I thought. I thought it was interesting, you know, just kind of veering off down a particular, you know, alleyway or stairway where, like, I didn't know that it would have those nooks and crannies where I could just go and poke around and look at stuff. It really, every time they showcased it, it really felt kind of like a long highway, a hallway. Yeah. (laughs) Of just that one corridor that leads up to the forge, but really there's all these little nooks and crannies. Um, it looks great. The views are great. Just looking up at the sky um, is really interesting. Um, I just felt like maybe it could have been a bit bigger. When I look at the Val Royo comparison, I'm like, it it feels like it's denser and more interesting, but it's not really that much bigger than Val Royo, is it? To me, it's not. I think it's it's probably a bit bigger, but it's like it's not as big as Red Cliff in Inquisition or something like that. I. Um, it, well, uh, at least for Red, I, I I think a big part of that is also like when we when we experience Valrio and Redcliffe, its potential was full, and we could see all the shops and whatnot. I feel like if all the shops were open and like we, the, I don't know, like if the bar was more functional and whatnot, then I would have the, I I don't know, like maybe it's bigger in like area mass, but I don't know, <laughs> maybe because you are just playing in first person, it feels a lot. Uh, bigger than what it actually is which and, I and you walk true. slow that yeah that's true which like um, okay here random thing so you try to sprint and at least for me nothing worked but then every once in a while it felt like i would just go like a little bit faster am i going crazy or is there technically a sprint it's just like the difference between um, walking fast and like <clears throat> walking a little bit faster Sprint worked. I thought Sprint worked when I tried it in Tarsus. Like, it just kind of did, like, a jog, sort of. It, it still was a bit slow. I wish it would go faster. Yeah. No, it definitely... You do definitely walk around kind of slow. And now as we're talking about the size, I wonder if that's not almost intentional to make it seem... Or at least to make the pace seem different. Um, but I liked Tarsus. I liked talking to Zoe and Amal. Uh, I, first of all, I love that bartender. Did you talk to him down in the bar? <laughs> he was a goober. <laughs> He's phenomenal. <laughs> He's it, it, it's right on the edge of like cheese, but also like the comedy aspect of it still kind of works. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right on that line. I think for some people it might be too much because he is sort of goofy, but I thought he was funny. Um, the one guy that uh, I don't even remember his name. Um, I guess he's another Lancer pilot. He was okay. I didn't like him as much as I like Zoe or Maul. <laughs> okay, so his, his name is Lucky Jack. And I, did you see when I met him during the, the stream? Yes, yes, yes. You were staring at his penis. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't staring at his penis. I, I like reading the subtitles, so they're right yeah, down there. Anyway, right. but like, I don't know if he, when he started talking, I don't know if you saw the chat just like became... Uh, like all about like wanting right. to smooch the guy and like yeah, it's yeah. completely because of the voice actor who's the same voice actor for like Abelos and Quister and Meriden and everyone loves those two characters to death but it was just so funny that like it kind of low-key me as well then all of my chat was like kiss him <laughs> we love him <laughs> well that's those are Bioware fans for you yeah yeah so that's... um so, so, right. So, Tarsus, I think, uh, yeah, that, those are my thoughts. I like the stuff where you could poke around. I, I liked talking to people that are not related to quests, like just, just chatting with them. Um, the dialogue system, to me, is good. Like, I wish there were more than two options, but I felt okay switching between 
you know, the, the right one, which seems to be more pragmatic and maybe a little bit more hardened and the left one, which is more optimistic and, and sort of upbeat, mm-hmm. you know, the distinctions in the responses felt, um, you know, enough to be noticeable. Like if you really wanted to lean more right side or left side, it would be okay. Um, I don't know. Did you, did you feel okay for, with the dialogue compared to being used to Dragon Age? Uh, no, I thought it was fine. Like I, I, I came into this expecting like the, that, <clears throat> They're saying this is, I see some people say this is an RPG shooter, and like, I, I think that this is a shooter with light RPG elements is what I kind of went in expecting, and that's what I'm getting, mm-hmm. so like, I'm not surprised. Um, so like, yeah, I thought it was, it was fine what it, I like that it, the, like, right or left side is mostly like, you know, the, the hardened veteran versus the newbie, because I think that's a good distinction that really just kind of encapsulates what <laughs> people generally want to yep. be. So I, I liked that. <clears throat> Um, I, uh, this is a really weird critique, but I thought the conversations went really fast. Um, it, like, it felt like, I, I, I wish there was a little bit more pauses in the conversation. And I, I feel like this is maybe something that if they did add, p- people would be annoyed by it. So like, I'm not saying they need to fix it, but there were sometimes it felt like someone would say something and then like, I would immediately say something and it was like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, it didn't really feel like a real conversation. It, it felt like in-game dialogue. Um, which is fine, um, which I, I will say later on uh, when I was playing with uh, Michael and my friend, um, my, my friend li- likes uh, some Bioware stuff, more so like early stuff, and Michael, he liked Mass Effect, but he doesn't really like Dragon Age at all. And uh, at least Michael, he accidentally got into a conversation with Zoe, and he was extremely annoyed by it. Because he didn't want to talk to anybody. And so, like, uh, he was just spamming through it. He's like, oh, this is so boring. I want to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> so I, he, he would probably wish that you could just walk away from her. So, um, Which you could do in Dragon Age, actually, if you get into a conversation accidentally. For the most part, you can walk away. So I'm, I'm surprised they didn't actually have that feature. But, yeah, that's really important, too, that just being able to walk away. Star Citizen has that also, where you can just be like, nope, I'm out of this conversation. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very close to agreeing with you about the RPG elements, except for the fact that like the builds and the customization and the, and the way that combat works to me is very RPG-ish. Like most shooters don't actually have that much depth to builds and all that other stuff. I think it's light in the sense of like the story and the dialogue. That's I, where it doesn't feel like a full RPG. I, I guess that's. I, I would agree, though. So I, I guess I what I meant by that was more like the character you are is light, but the suit is... I, I know they, they said, like, you are your pilot, not the suit, but, like, I you ex- expressed this, late, like, early on. Like, I think it's the opposite. Like, the suit is what you really yeah. care about. You're really probably not going to care that much about the freelancer. So... So that's such that is such a good point. I feel like this might be a really long episode because I feel like I could talk about <laughs> Anthem in so much detail right now, um, which is interesting because my summary at the end of it is not going to be it's not going to be reflective of that. But mm-hmm. okay, focus, Jordan. <laughs> get, get on point. Uh, you said something that I that I find to be really interesting, which is something that we have talked about before. As far as are you your suit? Are you the character? Um, I, I agree on that specific thing of. For the role playing of your actual person, I mean, you don't get to pick a name, even if people don't say it. I mean, even if I just typed in a name, that would have been interesting to me. Um, which who knows, full game that might be there. Um, uh, real quick, I, I read a review that said I forgot what it might have been Polygon or something that like when they played the game, they were able to pick a call sign, and that was oh. their name. Oh, interesting. So That'd I. That'd be I, cool. Yeah, so I, I don't know. They didn't say what the call signs were. Maybe that was just their build. I don't know. But that was uh, one of the reviews that I read for as far as names go. Yeah, well, I mean, Lucky Jack. Um, right? That was the guy's yeah. name? Was it Lucky yeah, Jack? Yeah, Lucky Jack. Okay. Uh, it's so funny, too. I didn't realize that was Lucky Jack because he gets referenced in the other conversations. And I'm like, who the fuck is Lucky Jack? It's that guy. <laughs> It's the guy you thought was boring, but all the girls are smitten with him. <laughs> That's apparently what it is. Uh, well, at, le- at least one MILF is smitten with them all down at the bar. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and the girl young. next door. And the, and the girl next door. Amal is just slaying it out there. Um, I don't 
know why. He's a dorky little guy. <laughs> uh, so on, on the issue of like role playing the suit versus the character, um, I agree that it feels like RPG light as far as actually role playing that character. And all of the emphasis is on the suit. So I want to take a little bit of a divergence here to, to kind of juxtapose anthem against something else um anyone who's been keeping up with my channel knows where this is going um i've been playing a lot of star citizen uh and i've been playing a lot of star citizen when i didn't expect to my my routine with star citizen since about 2015 has been sign in when when they've gotten like another full point up on the alpha like 1.0 2.0 3.0 play it for two hours remark on how amazing the potential is and yet how it's still basically not a game it's it's just like a tech demo and then log off and i'm done Mm-hmm. uninstall and i'm good and for the first time ever i found myself playing it for several hours like an actual game hey. uh, and it's just like because i just wanted to i was just like i, I kind of really want to do some more like delivery missions it's just side quests that's all it is <laughs> but it's fun right they have basic conversations and npcs the, the animations and graphics look amazing the ships are cool i love traversal and i'm like okay i'm, I'm kind of starting to get into this and what I'm realizing as I'm kind of starting to consider like my starter ship and do I want to have add upgrades or maybe do I want to, you know, get a better ship, etc. I'm realizing that I have a lot of attachment to my ship mm-hmm. and somewhat to the character. The character has some decent, they have their basic version of their character creator in there. There's a pretty decent amount of gear considering it's still only an alpha. But the main thing is really the ship. Like you feel this attachment to the ship to the point where when I thought about upgrading my ship to a better ship, to an objectively better ship, there was a part of me that was like, oh, but like, but this is my ship though. Like this is my ship. This is the one that I've done missions in. Like even though it's crappy, I like it. And I didn't have that with the horses in Red Dead Redemption. I didn't have that with the horses in in Kingdom Come. I've, I've never had that with other types of gear. It's really unique. Um, the, the feeling of peril that you have when you're sort of deep in, into, uh, I don't know, like you, you're running out of hydrogen fuel and you need to get somewhere where, where you can make a, a quantum jump and get to someplace where you can refuel. You kind of feel like you and your ship get through that together. So mm-hmm. that concept of being really attached to your gear makes sense. And I think it's there a little bit in Anthem. Like, I have a similar feel when I, every time I hop into the javelin, like, okay, this is my suit, this is my javelin. But I guess what I'm getting at is there's something that Star Citizen has as far as making you feel attached to the suit, that an- to, the, to the ship, that Anthem doesn't have with the suit, and I don't know what it is. If, if I may ask, because I, I don't know, Star Citizen, do you have to take care of your ship? Like, do you have to repair it? Uh, yes, if it gets damaged, you do have to repair it and you do have to refuel it. Yeah, I, I think that might be it because it's kind of like, you know, the difference between your neighbor's dog and your dog. You have to take care of your dog. You have to actively yeah. like make sure you feed it and wa- water your dog. But you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> like, uh, and, and when we talk about the ship, you have to repair it, you have to refuel it. It's something you're constantly working on and thinking about that way you're able to play the game versus the javelin um like you do upgrade it you do customize it you do whatever but like you don't actually do maintenance on it you don't have to worry that you just got hit a whole bunch of times and your armor is destroyed because you're just i mean it's fine so um i think if they added that i don't know if that would necessarily be better for the game but i think that would add an element of what you're talking about where like you really do care like oh no i worked really hard to keep this javelin alive <laughs> yeah know? okay first of all you're 100 percent correct <laughs> Like literally a thousand percent correct. And I don't know how I thought of it. I didn't think of that because that's exactly what it is. Um, it's also the fact that you can lose your ship, which is it like it's not really permanent and it's not really that bad. If you die and say your ship is uh, you sort of <clears throat> respawn at a space station, but your ship is where you left it. And so you have to put in an insurance claim uh, and, then, and then you have to wait five minutes <laughs> Ouch. Uh, of time before you have to sit around and wait for your ship to, to be replaced. Um, so I agree with that. And, and then the same thing is true in Red Dead Redemption, right? I started to get attached to my horse because it could die and because I had to feed it and, you know, keep it clean, take care of it. I think the one difference between Red Dead horses and Star Citizen ships as to why eventually I wasn't that attached to my horse is because horses can fuck up in Red Dead. 
<laughs> that's when I would be like, fuck this. I want a new horse because a horse might be too skittish or it might like buck you off or mm-hmm. just whatever. Whereas my ship so far has never like let me down in a stupid way, at which point I guess I would become infuriated with it and want another one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, back to Anthem. I guess, yeah, that, that's really the point, right? Like, how do they make us feel way more attached to the ship? Well, I, I feel like... I, I don't know if that's what they're going for, though. Like, I don't think they're going for be attached to your suit and more, like, be attached to what you can do. Does that make sense? Like, they, they have different types of javelins. Like, you're going to be more attached to the I want the javelin that can magic stuff i want the giant shield i can do whatever the heck that's what you're probably going to be attached to you're going to be like oh i'm going to main the storm i'm going to main the colossus or whatever um i I feel like that's what they're going for more than like i want the suit is now my baby you know (laughs) yeah that's the experience they've talked about from the beginning right you're a superhero and these are your this is how you become a new superhero just by putting on a different suit yeah so it's 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 I guess yeah more about the powers. So I I think that's where they're like I I don't know like I think it'd be cool to like be attached to the suit in that way, but I I feel like that's just not what they're going for. So like I can't blame them for not having that in the game. Yeah, no, I I, I see that as well. Did it feel perilous enough in in like the world like if in free roam? Because it felt like I was getting like mobbed a bunch by enemies. Like you can't really fly too far before you run into something that wants to eat you or spit acid at you. Oh, I thought it was fine. Like I played on um, easy on solo, normal with two people, and hard with three people. So um, I I don't know. In all three of those, like I thought, I don't know it, it, if there was something that nearby I could easily just like skirt by it or uh fight it i I don't know i didn't really come into a lot of trouble with that no i i didn't i would i wouldn't say that i ran into trouble with it either it feels just right except maybe slightly on the edge of like like trash mobby do you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. those um what digesters those like spider things oh yeah you know, those pop up a lot, and it's like, I like the fact that the world feels dangerous, but those become, you know, not too challenging after a while, and then it's just like, I guess I should just fly by them is what I should do, instead of, like, feeling like, but once one of those, one of those goddamn wyverns, when they spit acid at you, and you Ooh. crash because, or fire, and you crash because you overheated, like, yeah. that's a matter of principle, like, I'm like, oh, you motherfuckers gotta die. <laughs> I actually liked fighting uh, the wyverns the most, though, because, like, I, I don't know, like, we're on equal footing. Like, I can fly around, they can fly around. So we're, like, flying around trying to shoot at each other. Like, I, I thought that was much more interesting than fighting um, the little spider things. I don't actually remember what they're called with the blue tendrils or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also the brutes, which are okay, I guess. I don't know. They didn't seem that bad. I, I guess, like, my experience with them is I'm sitting on a rock and it's trying to come at me and just, like shoot a grenade and it explodes i'm like oh no mm-hmm. <laughs> so which i i don't know if you because i think you were playing solo but both on solo and when uh, i was playing with uh, my my husband and my friend um their strategy was to like walk in there like walk in there and then just like shoot people and then mine was to fly up high and just like snipe them from above <laughs> Because okay. I, I felt like a lot of, especially the ground units, they don't fly. And I have that great advantage. I can just sit up high and just chuck grenades at them and, <laughs> and look from above as they explode. While not being able to get hit very well. So, yeah, I don't know. But I, I feel like, m- maybe it's just for these missions, but I wish the enemies would be able to chase you more. Hmm. Well, I imagine on harder difficulties, that would have to be a given, right? Because we did see some enemy javelins pop up, right? The uh, the ones that are kind of like floaty-like. Yeah, the Valkyrie. It's like the storm, essentially. It's the essentially, storm. yeah. Yeah. Which, which like, they kind of could, but you just target them first, and there's only like two or three in a group, and then you got the rest of the trash mobs and the turrets just kind of chill out there. Like, I, I don't know. I, I wish that some of the, the trash mobs were able to have, like, little minor jet packs. And maybe they're slower to get to you, but they're still able to get up there. Or they have, like, grenades or something. to come. Not, not, like, granted, not all of them would work like that. But, like, it did feel like I was able to, if I was if too much trouble, just kind of go take a time out in the corner. Which isn't, like, the worst thing in the world. But, um, I don't know. That was my, my critique on it. 
Did you feel that the hover time, how'd you feel about the hover time? I mean, as far as overheating, both flying and hovering, how'd you feel about the overheating, like the time that you had? You know, to be honest, uh, well, do you mean like flight time or hovering? Both, and they're separate, but both. I actually didn't find myself hovering that much, to be honest. But for flight time, I thought it was pretty decent. Um, the only time I really felt frustrated with, oh, this is just a little bit too short, was like during the first quest that you do. There's like this one uh, jump that you basically have to like take a break and then do it again. Um, and that was kind of annoying. But like I, I don't know, I thought flying was actually pretty good. Hovering, I didn't have any experience with, although I think Michael, uh, he complained that it was just a little bit shorter than he wanted, but he had hoped that, like, um, <clears throat> if this is, like, a beginning of the game thing and it's too short, that's fine. Just let there be some add-ons where you can fly longer, which I was like, yeah, that's fair. So. Yeah, that that was my feeling on the hovering, is that it's just a bit shorter than I would like, and to me it's a bit shorter than than what I would consider to be regularly viable as like a is like a permanent way to fight right like you said when i was in fights i wasn't like hovering like in combat all the time or as the default mode i found hovering really useful um when i knew that someone was behind like a low or medium cover and the angle wasn't quite quite right i would double jump hover take them out and then drop down real quick I found it super useful for that, but I, I completely agree with michael's take on it, which is what I was thinking was this is maybe the default. And with appropriate gear and upgrades, you will be able to hover longer if that's the build that you want to have. Uh, also, we know that the Storm can hover much longer than the other suits by default. Yeah. So that is that's that is a loadout thing, not necessarily like a oversight in design. I think it's meant to be that way. For flying, I had a similar reaction of like, oh, like, yeah, you, it's not quite like this awesome power of like i'm gonna fly from one end to the map to the other it's like let me traverse really quick over a couple of spots and then like you said that moment when you feel like oh my i I gotta i gotta take a break my (laughs) my superhero's tired (laughs) uh it's it's a little weird but i did discover um kind of late last night when i was just messing around in free roam you know when you get good at figuring out how to use the the environmental cooldowns, like going up really high and then nose diving will cool you down and skimming oh. over the, yeah yeah. So I I remember that from the from the streams, but I kind of forgot to use it throughout all the missions. And then if you skim over the water, it will keep it neutral. Like you won't continue to overheat if you're just above water. Mm. And so when I started combining those, like, I kind of was able to get across half the map without having to land. And, it, and what I really like about it is the fact that it is, it's one of those things that you kind of have to get good at that makes flying a lot more interesting. If you know how to, you know, skim over the top of a creek and then go underneath the water on a lake. And then when there's no water around, real quick, go up and dive down. And then that'll get you to another spot where... You can just kind of chain all of these environmental things together so that it feels really cool that you're flying way longer than the normal cooldown will let you. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I quite like that. Also, uh, the waterfalls, the Tarsus Falls that are right in front of one of the um, spawn points that you can pick for free roam. Uh, It's basically the spot in the that they've shown uh, from the very beginning where where the where you jump off of the platform, the footage they showed in the first gameplay reveal, it's that spot. Mm-hmm. That's the most fun spot in the game because there's just waterfalls like crazy and you can just keep like nose diving and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I had a, I had a blast literally just flying around there. <coughs> all right, so um, I guess let's talk a little bit more about the missions. Like once you once you actually jumped into the missions, what did you think of? I mean, we've already kind of talked a little bit about combat, but what do you think of combat as a whole? And how did you find like the mission structure? So I, real quick, I should clarify. Uh, despite having played three missions, I've only played the first mission three times because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I played it once, and then I played it with Michael, and then a friend joined. We're like, well, shit, I guess we'll play it again. So just kind of progress so i have not actually gone any farther in the demo than that um but that mission um i it, it was kind of interesting having played it three times and have three people th- three different people um experience it um for me on my own i actually thought it was fine like uh, i i guess um you know i wanted to see the world and this is seeing the world and like uh, i thought the um particularly talking about the, the first mission the part where like you know uh, you 
you you know there's one person in this vault thing and then when you get in there there's three which foreshadows what happens later on with i don't even remember the guy's name now matthias there it is um i thought that was interesting like i I, like i i thought it was you know it's it's kind of a short little quest but i had fun with it and like i think it I think it's scaled a bit weird because the, so there's, I guess, three different enemy camps you fight and then the quote unquote boss of it. And it, it was easy, like easy camp, medium camp, the really hard camp, because that's where we died a couple times. But then when you actually get to the boss fight, it was really easy. Like that, those three Valkyries, I think, weren't even a challenge. Um, so, yeah. And then the puzzle at the <laughs> end was, I think, a bit... Uh, that was, like, the ultimate boss. <laughs> yeah. Like the ult- that was the hardest part of the whole mission. Yeah, no, that... I think that was, honestly, a really poorly designed puzzle. Um, and I... That was... That puzzle is easily my um, harshest critique of the demo, I think. Because I like puzzles. I really like puzzles. Um, and, like, <clears throat> me, Michael, and my friend John, we all had different experience with it. Like, me, I'm sitting on stream going, like, I don't... I. I, I know there are probably some runes that I have to look at, but I don't know where they are. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what to do. Someone in my chat eventually had to tell me where to look, and then I found it, and that, that was fine. Um, Michael, I sent him on it. He had no idea what to do. I eventually, and like He was very stubborn, like, I want to figure out my own. And eventually, he just gave up. He couldn't find them. I had to tell him where it was. John, um, he ran around, was trying to figure out his own, and he accidentally found the there's like a, a rune under a bridge, and he was actually able to figure out from there. So I, I think that um, if that puzzle was like the second puzzle of a series of puzzles like that, and you know what you're looking for, and where there would roughly be, I think that puzzle would be a little bit better. But as Michael and John were quick to point out, like they're here to run and shoot things and whatever. They don't want a puzzle like this. This puzzle doesn't make any sense. They don't understand why the runes were where they are. Like if it was like a fallen column and the rune like was on the column and like now it's rolled somewhere weird, that would make sense. But it's just like who puts who designed this room and put a rune under a bridge? That doesn't make sense to them. Which I thought was a fair critique. So no, I agree. And also, like, if it's meant to be, like, some sort of deterrent or a security system, like, what kind of bullshit security is this that can be overcome by, like, 20 minutes of frustrated searching? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not really going to stop anyone. It's just going to just gonna piss them off. Yeah. So I, I think overall, the, the puzzle was just, it, it wasn't very good. It was poorly designed. And that, that was easily my harshest critique. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that it would help if they had um, one little change, and I mentioned this to you over email, which is that they had some sort of audible sound that grew louder as you were closer to being in the vicinity of the thing. That would yeah. that would have changed it dramatically, because then also you would have heard the beeping, and it would have cued you into the fact that you know that's basically what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, so I, I also found the puzzle to be sort of interesting um not the not the best design i ended up seeing the red rune just sort of uh coincidentally and then i was like okay i got it uh i got it from there but also as i was playing it it occurred to me that it's basically the skyrim puzzle right where you have to match the uh the Yes. Um, maybe with like the same amount of frustration because like you don't really expect the claw to have the runes on the goddamn claw you know <laughs> but um so when you when you when you don't know what you're looking for it's very frustrating but yeah i guess it kind of is just like match the three pictures and, and then you're done um or not that it's that one but not the version of it where the with the claw doors but it's the it's the same symbols but where you have to rotate the pillars oh that one yeah it, okay and it's always like there's one you can rotate and then there's an image typically somewhere above it or around that that shows you what you're supposed to rotate it to yeah it's, it's like one of those puzzles that's like it's actually like stupidly simple but they make it quote-unquote challenging by just hiding the shit which i i guess that's a puzzle um but i've always i've always felt kind of like oh you you seem like you're trying to straddle the line between something that's really way easy but just like arbitrarily making us take more time on it yeah um, so I wasn't a fan of the puzzle either. And I thought that the the overall, like, let's say the first mission, same thing. Like, if that was supposed to be the equivalent of a boss battle, fighting those three Valkyries, I'm like, I blasted through those really easy. Oh, yeah. Um, and I will say, so overall, right, on the combat, I played by myself. So I have not even had the experience of playing with anyone. And I played on normal. I was 
somewhat torn, I guess, uh, at various points between, oh, okay, this is going to be really, like, soloable. Like, this is, you can play this solo, like, no issue. And then other moments where I thought, you know, this is probably not going to be soloable later on. Granted, this is supposed to be somewhere in the middle of the game, or you're at level 10. So it's not exactly like a starting point, I guess. But I was like, huh. I go, this is this is appropriately challenging. I like it, but I also kind of think, like, what is this going to be like on the final levels where the difficulty is going to be higher, um, you would think. And and I think it might, it might start to push into the territory of getting frustrating if you're by yourself. The way I would compare it is to say playing on normal uh, for Anthem is about the same difficulty maybe slightly higher as playing uh, on hard on uh, hardcore and mass effect andromeda mm, okay if you're by yourself <clears throat> at least on like granted i've only done the one but uh easy like i i don't i think i got in trouble a little bit at the uh there's like one hard camp in that first thing and i got in a couple trouble and almost died um a couple times but like i was able to skirt by it so yeah, I would say like it, it, it almost felt like I was playing on uh, in that section. I felt like I was playing like a, rather than on easy, like a little bit harder difficulty. So yeah, if if you're someone who wants to play solo and you're really bad at video games, maybe this is going to be some trouble. But if like you can, I, I think if if you're you know you like playing on harder difficulties, it's totally doable though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it is doable. I just think it's going to push up against that line on the normal difficulty level if you're playing by yourself. And then when I read the descriptions for the difficulty levels, apparently on easy, you're not going to get any rare drops. Or it's a lot less likely or something like that, which is really kind of a catch-22 because I kind of feel like the one way to offset the higher difficulty at least so far from what I've seen, is with gear. Because I did get towards the end... Uh, I got a rare, um, either a component or one of the one of the pieces of support gear that upped my shields and armor like considerably above the common level version of the same item. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I went back out into free roam with that upgrade installed on there, I was like, oh yeah, well this makes a big difference. I can take way more damage now. Um, but the thing is, if you're playing on easy, like it would be nice if you could play on easy until you got some better gear and then you can maybe bump up to normal, but it seems like that won't happen because you won't get any of the, of the higher tier stuff on easy. So you kind of have to just make it through on normal until you start to get better gear, I guess. Can you get drops on free roam? Uh, yeah, I got some. So yeah, I wonder if like maybe then you would start on like, I don't know, maybe like a harder difficulty free roam on solo and just kind of get some trash mobs until they uh, drop something. Then again, that's a grind, so I don't know. Um, yeah, that's I don't true. Know. Maybe, maybe there, like, granted, I don't know. There might also be ways to even like buy some of those things in uh, Fort Tarsus, you know, not with like real money, but like with whatever coins you collect. And I, uh, I know, I noticed there's a lot of um, there, there's like this one street that has a lot of vendors on it that you at, in the demo you couldn't interact with, but there was one that looked to have like guns and animal parts and like uh different helmets and stuff like that so i wondered if you could actually buy stuff from there rather than uh, you know find a drop yeah well world events too i did complete a couple of world events as well which are nice because you get a chest full of stuff <laughs> um crafting as well i haven't crafted anything yet but i i wanted to craft a rare item because i i can craft a couple of rare uh versions i think um, I'm not entirely clear yet on how the crafting system works. I don't know if I have to progress it in a linear fashion where I have to do common and uncommon first. Um, cause I was looking at it and I, I thought that I had all of the materials necessary for the rare item. Um, you have to, for anyone that hasn't looked at that yet, you have to get embers, uh, in addition to, it'll say weapon parts or like the, the different metals or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then you have to have a certain number of rare embers, um, which you can get from normal drops and chests that you get from world events, etc. I thought I had all the components that I needed, and yet I couldn't craft it for whatever reason. Um, but that's another way I suppose people could get gear is to try and craft it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wonder if you're on easy, will you get rare embers in, as rewards for things? I don't know, to be honest. So I guess that's something to watch out for um, while playing the demo, and, and also... Uh... 
I don't know when once the game comes out. Yeah, no, I, I just I want I want solo to be really viable for people. I think I'll be fine on normal because I'm used to playing games on on a slightly higher difficulty level. But I can imagine if you're just someone who wants to play something because you normally play single player action RPGs and you play on normal, uh, this normal difficulty level is like one step up. Now, I, I will say um, something that I believe it was Lady Insanity tweeted out. Um, so I, I don't know if you've played this mission yet or if there is a mission like it in the demo because I was just reading what she had. But I, I know they have seen, uh, they have shown this in um, uh, some of the, the live streams that they've done. But there's like a mission where like it pops out like little echo light ball things that you have to collect and put in a bin or whatever. Yes. So um, what she was saying that uh, kind of a major flaw of that is if someone on your team collects the echoes but then doesn't distribute it back into the bucket or whatever, you're just screwed. Like it doesn't spit out anymore and then you can't steal them from your friends. So you can easily have someone come and troll your game when they do that if they just steal the echoes and then go fuck off. Oh, well... That, I guess, could happen. That's interesting. I actually completed one of those. It was in a world event, and I just did it solo. Um, I thought that was, was kind of fun in a weird way. Like, it's super simplistic. You just go pick up these things and add them back, but I don't know why. I guess I'm just a, I'm a dummy for collection. Um, but I, guess, I guess the only thing that is sort of a natural deterrent to that is everyone gets loot, right? So it's like, if they would, would it really be worth it to them to troll you knowing that if they if they just put that last piece in there like they would get probably a, a rare piece of gear also oh but jordan they're not in it for the loot they're, <laughs> they're in, in it, it to for the lulls <laughs> yeah no it's possible on, i mean man. look people people troll all the time so i guess it is it is possible um i was at uh, speaking of those i was actually a little more concerned about a separate one that's that's similar uh to that but you said you have to fly through um like these checkpoints or these markers in a certain amount of time. So you've got like a minute, you've got to hit eight of them and you've got to fly around a certain area to pass through all of these energy fields on time. Um, I tried that, you know, when I was in free, in free roam. And I guess the other people that were in there were just going off doing something else. Um, and then when a second person came to do it, it seemed like, Oh, you really can't do that without at least one other person. Yeah. Cause you kind of have to cover a lot of ground to search for them and then reach them. And then, you know, they're spread out. So that's another instance where I go, I don't know if I would have been able to do that by myself without trying it multiple times. Yeah. But I guess um, the answer then is just trying it multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, enemy types to, to talk again about what my, what I noticed playing by myself, there are certain enemy types where it's a, it's a perfectly valid, way to build an enemy um to have a really strong like front defense like there are enemies like that in all kinds of games where you can't really hit them from the front because they're basically impenetrable and you kind of have to get around to the side or the back Mm -hmm. um so there's a couple of those in anthem but they're just a little bit different than what i would expect in the sense that they are they're not virtually impenetrable. They're impenetrable from the front. And if you try and shoot in the legs or kind of off to the side, it's it's not really very effective. To me, I got the feeling of this was an enemy type designed for your buddy to get in the back while yeah. while you while you draw aggro. And you can you can do it, like you can dodge and you can, you know, try and fly over them really quickly, but they turn around really fast. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just missing something. Somebody can can chime in and let me know if they had more luck. I mean, I was able to, to defeat all of them, but every time I ran into one, I'm like, this is this is like the two-player enemy, which is clearly designed for to be taken out by a team. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to start talking about the glitches now? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, yeah. I'm glad we're on the same mind of that. I wanted to save that till the end. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, lastly, I, I do want to say one last thing about combat because yeah. I've kind of harped on it for a couple of different things. Overall, it's really fucking good. Um, yeah, I I will say like we so um I w- when I was playing with Michael and my friend, we were uh there there was a couple of bugs that they were having that they were frustrated with, but it, I think overall they they had a good time. Like there was definitely they had their complaints and there was things that they would rather fix and I don't think it, the demo convinced them to like buy the game or anything. Um but uh like we we had a good time playing with each other. So yeah, that's that's something. 
Yeah, especially on some of those uh, camps in the first mission, like it really sunk in that I'm like, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this combat. I feel powerful uh, most of the time. Um, the combinations uh, of the abilities feel good. Uh, the the cooldown times by default are pretty good. I don't feel like I'm waiting for a long time for cooldowns. Um, you know, the the guns have great audio design. They feel like they have good pop, like they have good weight to them. Uh, the the vertical aspect in combat makes sense to me. Like it 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 is valuable to just quick fly to a somewhat different part of the map to get a different angle to to get a different vantage point. I use hovering sparingly, but it feels really cool when I again kind of like hover over an enemy's cover to take them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that stuff feels feels really satisfying. It feels fast. It feels frenetic. I I liked all of that. Um, so that, that's really important is how does, how does the combat feel? How does the customization feel? How does the flying feel? Um, flying, I would give more of like a B. I, I, there's a, something that's a little bit off with flying. I've heard some people say maybe it's got to do with like the acceleration or negative acceleration when you're changing directions as far as how it reads that on a mouse or joysticks. Um, Something something about it feels like it could be a little bit faster, but at the same time, the controls aren't super sharp, even though it feels a little bit slower, if that makes sense. Um, so sometimes it doesn't feel that great, but I don't know. Maybe as I just get the hang of it more, I'll uh, I'll enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. Um, just overall, the core, the core gameplay loops, I do think, work as far as flying, fighting, customizing... And then I'm, there's maybe just a little bit more out of Tarsus in, in the RPG aspects than I than I thought, because my expectations were pretty low on that. Uh, but that's all when it works. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's all when you can actually log into the game. I so I, I feel like let me go first because I have a very short piece on it. But yeah. uh, I other than what you saw on stream, uh, which was having trouble getting on, I had only once the infinite loading glitch. Uh, I, it's been running smooth as butter. I've had no issues at all, at all. Wow. I, nothing, nothing has gone wrong. I've not had a loading uh, infinite time. It has not lagged. It has not done anything. It's running smooth as butter. Everything's perfect. So I read all of these people talking about everything that's going wrong. And I'm just like, oh shit, I'm lucky. <laughs> There's nothing like everything has been fine for me. And like, uh, meanwhile, like, uh, so my, my husband's computer's behind me. So I point behind me, my husband, uh, he was having a lot of trouble with the infinite loading glitch, um, and uh, what my my friend had that trouble once, and um, I think he said it lagged a bit. I can't remember. And one, we we actually had a fourth friend that I gave my code to. He can't even start it up. It's just a black screen. Wow. Um, so, which I, real quick, I do want to say. Uh, there might be some issues with his computer that is the cause of that. We don't know if that's the game or his computer, but um, yeah, so there, there has, there's, there's me who seems to be the outlier in a sea of other people having, having issues. Um, but I, I do want to say there are people out there and I am one of them who, for some reason, it's going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a blast. Right. So, I mean, I guess it's probably a good thing that, uh, well, it's definitely a good thing that you're not having issues, but I mean, it's probably a good thing that there are a bunch of people who are not having issues. I kind of feel like you run into a bit of a, of a sampling bias whenever you look at like Twitter, for instance. Um, like I have a poll up right now on my Twitter. Uh, that's like, you know, how has your connectivity been uh, with Anthem? And if I check it right now on the, on the latest, um, I think the last time I checked, it was like 58, 59% that said that they couldn't even connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right now I've got 55% can't even log in. And only 12% that say almost no issue. But the problem with that is there's a, there's, there's a sampling bias in that. A lot of the people who have no issue aren't on Twitter complaining. They're playing the game. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of times with stuff like this is what you get is if you can't play the game or kind of like what was happening to me every time the server would crash and I would have to log out or restart the game or whatever, I would tweet about it because I was waiting for the game to start back up. So um that that I think is is one of the things we have to say up front. There are probably a lot of people who are not having any issue who just aren't on Twitter. Uh, so sometimes the problems can seem bigger than they are because all the people having problems are, are talking about it. 
Um, I will say a couple of things. The, the When I first started playing, it was really almost no problems. Um, I had trouble logging in, but I had a shorter time getting started than you did. Um, it probably wouldn't start for me within the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then after that, I got in. Uh, I, I never... No, that's not true. I only got the infinite loading screen one time the entire time that I played, and that was in the evening. Um, once I logged in, everything was everything was pretty much fine until almost after I was done with the first mission, which I did have to play through a couple of times, ultimately. But um, yeah, I would say there's a couple of login issues and then nothing until the evening. And I feel like almost right after the tweet went out that they fixed the login issues for the PlayStation 4 and PC, that's when I just ran into incredible amounts of lag. Like, just unplayable lag where you where your character is rubber banding, where you'll, like, walk and then you'll get jumped back, like, 15 feet where you were, and then you'll try and walk, and that was happening during flying and during dodging, and I was still trying to play, so it was happening during fights, and it was just infuriating in the moment. Um... I don't know what to say about that other than I don't think everyone is getting that much lag. I think it's probably only a few people that got major lag. I ran every kind of test. I did speed tests on my own internet. I tried various different connections. Um, all of EA's online games typically require the same port forwarding. So if you play if you play online for Battlefield or Battlefront 2 or Andromeda multiplayer or anything, it's basically the same ports because it's all EA servers. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are already open. Those are already set up correctly on my router. I did ping, trace, whatever. Everything on my end was good. Um, it was just, and I tried logging out, logging back in, seeing if that you know moved me onto a different instance on the servers. For a good hour, I was just slogging through the second mission, just, just hating it. <laughs> just absolutely. Aww. It was just an absolute, it was miserable. I was just like so frustrated. And then I took a break and just thought, look, the servers just aren't good right now. So I just, you know, went to get something to eat. And when I came back, it was better. It was rubber banding a little bit occasionally. And then it would correct itself and it would be fine. And then I finished the third mission. And uh, at least for me, and I heard a lot of other people, I didn't get to watch the last cutscene uh, for the third mission because it's broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you just have to hold B. It, it's not that the game freezes or anything. You just, it just It's a black screen. And you just have to hit B and skip it. And then it says, thanks for playing the demo. <laughs> so I, I really have no idea. I have, Honestly, it's not even a spoiler alert. I have no idea what happens to Matthias. Oh, no. I'll have to wait till the full game comes out to find out what happens to Matthias. But um, yeah, I guess, I guess in the moment, had someone asked me last night, I probably would have been a little more frustrated over it. I, I think I tweeted out. It's like, look, number one, it's a game. Everybody should chill out. Number two, it's a beta. Like, did you really think this was going to go smoothly? Uh, and then, you know, number three, it does seem to clear up over some amount of time. Uh, although I know there are some people who say that they still have not been able to make it off Tarsus, despite the fact that they've been trying to play since yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone tweeted that at me earlier. Um, so yeah, I mean, a, a lot has been made of, of the technical issues, polygons and, and everybody else is writing articles about it. And the subreddit for Anthem is just absolute rage <laughs> a lot of places yeah. they're really frustrated right now i get that but at the same time when i when i zoom back and look at it in a more holistic way i think okay there were some login issues predominantly for the first couple of hours knowing that there are some extreme cases of people that still can't log in most people were able to log in after a couple of hours and there is some lag but it's a small number of people who have experienced like game breaking lag all in all, you know, like a B minus as far as betas go. And we're not even, that was just the first day. We still have today and tomorrow, so. Well, th here's something that I've been saying time and time again. Um, there's a lot of people um, who say like, well, they didn't advertise this as a beta. They advertised this as a demo and it VIP demo where um, you had to pre-order the game or get the Origin Premiere Access or whatever to get into it. So apparently there is a fair amount of people that bought the game specifically to play this demo, and what they expected was a fully functional demo, and they're having a lot of issues. So um, what what do you think of that? Like, I I can see where they're coming from at the same time. Like, I, I guess I expected this to be a beta, not a demo. So, like, yeah. 
there's that. But, like, I, I think it is a fair point. Like, they advertise it as a demo, and demos are different than betas. So Yeah, that's 100% correct. And I know people will go, wait a minute, hold on. How can that be 100% correct based off of what you just said? And to me, it's two things that are both true that are not mutually exclusive because we're talking about perspective ultimately, right? And I think that the what I just said about it being a beta, et cetera, and you're going to expect these things, and what you just mentioned about people who say, you know, this was supposed to be a showcase of the game. Why wasn't it better? I think both of those things are true, but it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to Bioware, I'm absolutely telling them, you should have done way better than this. And the it's a beta line is not acceptable because the way that they have been framing this and all of their social media and all of the PR and all of the interviews and the dev streams is that the audience for Anthem deserves, and this is an exact word that they've used, deserves to be able to see the game early, to see what they're getting, or if they're undecided, to decide if this is a game that they want to get. We think the game should have demos. We think the game should have lengthy demos. And we're so excited to show you guys that Anthem is an awesome experience. I mean, the subreddit was alight with positivity, you know, all the way up until Thursday, all the way up until yesterday when the thing went live, with everyone talking about how great it is that we're getting this demo and no one would be holding back praise if it was all good, right? Bi- Bioware is not going to deflect the praise and go, oh, no, no, you can't talk about how good it is. It's only a demo. It's like, it's got to work both ways. If, you, if you're going to accept whatever praise you get, you also have to accept all the criticism. And so, yeah, if I was in a room talking with Bioware, it's like, yeah, this is not acceptable. You had to do better than this. You can't just fall back on the fact that it's a demo or a beta or whatever, for a lot of people, this, this is all eyes on you. This is the first time a broad audience has gotten a hold of a Bioware game since Mass Effect Andromeda. And you know how quickly the YouTubers and social media spread bad PR about you guys. This is your first step into the into the spotlight. It really needed to be perfect. And I think it's only... I actually don't think it's catastrophic, but it's certainly less than perfect. And it's it's slightly less than it should have been. So yeah, I I would agree with that if I'm talking to Bioware, but if I'm talking to people who are trying to play the game, I just go, look, you're going to be less frustrated if you just kind of take a deep breath and accept that this stuff happens. It's not about condoning it. It's about managing your own enjoyment level. And if you just take a break and go play something else and just try it a couple hours later, you're going to feel better. Like you're literally going to feel better. So don't stress yourself out. I agree with that. I guess, like, me, I came into it, um, so I, I, I will say, uh, apparently the NDA is still there, so I can't, like, talk about all my things. I did play the alpha, so I expected a lot when I went into the demo, and I think my expectations were, uh, uh, succeeded, I guess. Yeah. Well, that, well, well, that <laughs> so. any reasonable person, because I, I didn't participate yeah. in the closed alpha and I expected this. I mean, I think it's yeah. it's true of what any reasonable person would expect when a large number of people are going on to, uh, to the servers and you're, you're always going to run into issues with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing we should talk about, though, is is the vernacular that has been used to reference this because there were a couple of different error messages that people were getting. I think the one that showed up first and the one that showed up for most people was something to the effect of um, the servers have reached capacity and like there's no more room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who was behind the actual verbiage of that message, but that really seemed to set people off on, on this tangent of like, well, how come you guys don't have enough servers? How come you don't have more capacity? How come you didn't plan for this? And both uh, Gamble, Mike Gamble, producer on the game, Casey Hudson uh, from Bioware were coming out and saying this is not a capacity issue. It's a separate server-related issue. I, I don't know. I mean, they wouldn't lie about that, right? I mean, that's probably true, but it doesn't matter because that message was up there and that was not helpful. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you thought about anything about that, like what the messages were and what people, what people's reaction to them were. Uh, I'll be honest. So he, so here's the thing, because I have had pretty much no issues and, you know, that all of that, like, I don't go looking at quote unquote fixes. I haven't really been looking at the subreddit or Twitter because I don't mm. need to. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that I, is... I have glanced at them to see what their reaction is. I go, ooh, this is a dumpster fire. I want to go play the game that uh, works. <laughs> okay. So, like, Cold-blooded. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the truth. Like, I, like, and here's another thing. I, I did get some of those error messages at the beginning, but, like, I'm one of those people that don't read error messages. So, I, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't get error. I haven't gotten the error messages. And if I got them, I probably wouldn't read them. I just say, oh, it doesn't work. I'm going to do something else now. <laughs> so, uh, Katie. Katie, Katie, is has Tamar rubbed off on you? Is this what we're <laughs> <laughs> is this is this what we're witnessing? This is this is Katie going like I have no idea about the concerns of the peasants. My perfect internet <laughs> speeds are working. I have perfect server functionality. <laughs> what it is like why my computer has been blessed by the gods because like michael who's on the same internet connection as me like he's he's having issues i don't no, know what it know, is about me you know you know what it is is the folks over at bioware hooked it up with that special gilderthal and server connection <laughs> i have my own server <laughs> <laughs> they just they had they have to get up with the v vips like the very very important <laughs> play gotta make sure gilderthal doesn't have any, <laughs> any issues <laughs> Oh, you know me. She's always so positive, so we have to keep that in mind. <laughs> so when Dragon Age 4 ends up being garbage, she's still going to suck up. Oh, back. no. <laughs> well, what ha- Yeah. The, uh, for, any, for any poor, unfortunate soul that thinks we're being serious, you're ridiculous because there were so many streamers who could not get in. Uh, oh, yeah. Poor Ash over at uh, Odyssey. Uh, uh, so gaming, it used to be Mass Effect Odyssey or Bioware Odyssey. Now it's gaming Odyssey. Um, mm. They couldn't get in forever. Oh, man. Was Jack able to get in? Because I know at one point he appeared on my stream going, hey, this is great, isn't it? And like I was able to get in soon after, so I didn't actually get to check his I, stream out. I, I was watching his stream a little bit. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if he did eventually get in or not, but when I left, still no luck. So, Yikes. So, I don't know. I'm just stupid. Now, I will say, uh, while, I was, while Anthem was running perfectly fine, what actually really annoyed me about... Um, you know, all of the Anthem demo stuff, it, the EA servers actually went down and it broke my Dragon Age. And I was very upset about that. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone uh, someone uh, who I follow who follows me on Twitter said, yeah, I can't even play The Sims right now. What gives? Like, I don't care about Anthem. <laughs> yeah, I like, um, so at least what I saw when I was looking for a fix for my Dragon Age, apparently uh, the thing that I was reading is... Uh, <clears throat> There's so many people trying to log on to the servers that essentially, like, EA is DDoSing themselves, DDoSing themselves. Like, I, I don't know much about computers. I don't know if that's true or not. But that, that at least makes a lot of sense. There's just so many people that they just got overwhelmed and poof, exploded. So I'm actually really glad you mentioned that because that is something to talk about as far as if I was talking to Bioware, what would I be advising them on that they could have done better? So I don't remember the individual's name. Um... Maybe I should even look it up to give them credit for it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, here we go. All right, so the guy's name is, I guess it's pronounced Gossy. I don't know where this comment is taken from. Maybe that's his username. So I remember this person. So his comment says, I'm the guy on Gaff who did the packet captures of No Man's Sky at launch to prove that it had no multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if people remember that, but there was that whole issue where people were figuring out that it, it basically had no multiplayer when it was sort of, uh, it I, I vaguely remember that where they're like, "Oh, we're gonna have multiplayer soon. It's it's in the code. We just gotta activate it." And everyone's like, "No." <laughs> yes. So this is the guy who found that out. So I kind of feel like there's some more credence there to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. This is someone who does uh, have a track record of having uh, diagnosed these things accurately in a way that ends up being confirmed later. Uh, so he goes on to say, "I did packet capture on Anthem, and it has the opposite problem. It fails to connect." Uh, if it fails to connect, it floods their servers trying to reconnect. They've created a condition where they've DDoSed themselves and EA, essentially saying that it's not timing out the way that it should. It just becomes an infinite number of connect attempts. Um, which, if is if that's true, um, I mean, I don't know. I'm a dummy. I probably could have made that mistake. But I would hope that somebody at Bioware would have noticed that and not done that. Um, again, we don't know just because this guy has accurately diagnosed one thing doesn't mean that he's hundred percent correct here, but it's worth looking into as though it has some, as, as though there's at least some credence to that. And if that's the case, it would appear that they've fixed it. Um, but man, that's uh that's not a good oversight to have made. 
new. I'm sure someone is in a lot of trouble over at EA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, maybe we should just be like watching the job boards on EA and oh, see if no, like that's too dark. server server technician for hire. <laughs> <laughs> and also, is that an EA? Does EA handle that side of the house? Or is that somebody at Bioware? I don't know. Well, the EA and Bioware job boards are the same, so we can find out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's got to be a combination <laughs> of the two. And uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Which uh, I, I will say, uh, granted, I haven't been having issues, so I don't know how, how well it's been working. But um, I, I, Twitter seems to be so active with like um, the, the figureheads of Bioware and like the people who made at them saying like, okay, these are the issues we're seeing. Here's a report of everything we've seen. Here's how we're trying to fix it. Is does is it working? No. Okay, we're gonna be still working on it. Like it seems like they didn't just throw it out there and they left. Like they're really trying to work with people. On it. Oh, I, I agree 100. percent I think that they're doing as much as they can. And people on Twitter are just remaining. Some of them, obviously not everyone. There's some people who are taking it in stride, and that's great. But there's some people who are goddamn rabid. Yeah. Um, there was there was a, I think this was actually on Reddit, someone talking about uh, what was going on on Twitter. And some of the EA help uh, uh, tech support Twitter folks were just switching shifts and said like, okay, we're, we're leaving for the night or whatever, talking about their shift. Uh-huh. And Reddit just flipped out of like proof that EA is giving up on Anthem already. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's like, and like this just shows what disregard they have for the community that they're gonna go home and enjoy their evening while I still can't love. And like there was someone else tweeting on the support account like five minutes later, they were just changing shifts. And first of uh-huh. all, even if they weren't, fuck you. It's seven o'clock at night. Like these people got to go to bed. Like their day's over. They're at work. This is their job. Like they get to go home. Which I feel bad for the person who had the overnight shift. <laughs> like, right? Like somebody who that's their job. But it's like, relax, people. Like, you know, haven't you ever had a problem at your job that's a problem for your customers and you're very sorry and you tried hard to fix it, but it's time to go home now. Yeah. Like, you don't have to work all day and all night on that problem. Um, but no, I mean, EA has, I think they have almost round the clock tech support at some point, but um yeah, people are just really antsy. I get it. It is super frustrating. I felt super frustrated at first also. Uh, and, and I felt, honestly, I, I was less frustrated when I couldn't log in as when I was in the middle of a boss fight and rubber banding all over the map with horrible lag. That's when I wanted to throw my controller. But um, yeah, I, I think I think these are just things that you have to expect with a beta. And, and quite honestly, I'm going to expect issues even through the first couple weeks, first months, month of launch, honestly. Um, it happened with Destiny. It happened with The Division. It happens with pretty much everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess like pretty much all games I've ever had, like the first kind of, at least modern games, like the first, first uh, week of launch, there's a whole bunch of like bug fixes and patches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I yeah I'm not I'm not surprised. So I guess overall, how would you rate the demo? Um, it it's I don't know I don't know I don't know what metric or what language or what terminology I want to use as a, to rate it. Um, it was fun to play while I could play it. <laughs> that was that that's really the main thing I would say. I got more out of the RPG elements than I expected, but still not as much as I would like. Uh, I think the combat is very serviceable, uh, and at times it really shines. At, at times when it just hits the sweet spot, even as a single player, it worked really well. I think it might get frustrating in the long run as a solo player. Um, overall, I'd give it a strong performance. Um, oh, one other thing on the technical side of the of the whole experience, when there wasn't any network issues and when we're just talking about PC performance, not bad. I, I was pleasantly surprised, actually, that I was getting 60 frames per second at 1440p on ultra everything in Tarsus for the most part um, with certain dips that are related to CPU bottleneck. I have a CPU, I have a 4690K that's overclocked quite a bit to 4.5 gigahertz at this point. But it's not, it doesn't have uh, multi-threading, and so it, it's starting to show its age. I did not expect to have the best... Um, the best specs CPU wise, uh, GPU wise, you know, no problem. Well, plenty of overhead on my GTX 1080 Ti. Um, 
so yeah, I would just say on a technical note, I thought that the game ran pretty well. Out in the world, it fluctuated quite a bit, like from 40s to 60 to sometimes even like 30s. Um, so I would say it's probably a slightly worse than how Andromeda runs. I, I would like for it to be optimized more, and I would like for the FP- FPS range to be a lot more consistent. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, not bad. I was kind of bracing myself for it being potentially terrible uh, for older CPUs, so... Uh, yeah, not, not bad overall. What, what are your kind of overall thoughts? Um, really trying to grade it on my own experience and not the experience of others. Like I, I had a good time. Like I, yeah, especially like, I, I don't know. I, I guess I really not that fond of shooters. You know, I'm, I'm really not that into it, but like, I still had fun flying about like I, I, I think the the addition of the flying and just like the weird scenery, I think makes this something that I would actually be interested in playing. Um, so I, yeah, I uh, I'll, I'll keep the uh, <laughs> the pre order if you will. But I, I guess I when I first played Dragon Age and even when I when I was playing Mass Effect, there there was like this moment where I was like, oh, I'm gonna like this. And at least in the demo, I it, it, and granted, I haven't even finished the demo. I have not gotten that yet. And maybe sometime mm-hmm. in the, um, you know, when, when when you play the real game, there's something that I'm missing that I'm going to say, like, oh, okay, I'm going to like this game. But, like, I, I, I enjoyed my experience, but at least there isn't that spark there where I'm going to be making, like, lore videos and quoting it as my favorite game yet. So I, I think that... Um, maybe it's there, but I didn't see it in the demo, uh, but overall I did enjoy myself. Is this making sense? It makes perfect sense. And I, when you said that, that really clicked for me as far as that one special moment. Mm-hmm. It's for me, I would say it's not quite there, but it was almost there. Like when I just started walking around Tarsus and I sort of naturalistically found the bar and I was like, oh, okay, I can I can just kind of explore it. Oh, here's the bar. I've seen this in videos. This is cool. Let me walk around. Can I talk to someone? Oh, I can talk to him all. He's the bartender, and he tells me this funny story. And, like, I actually have dialogue choices that lead him to a different conclusion. And I was like, it's almost that kind of thing from a Bioware game that I love with explora- exploration and dialogue, but not quite. It's just a little bit too shrunk down. And so I kind of feel you on the... Uh, there's no special magic moment yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe it's there. It's just yeah. I didn't get it from the demo. And granted, I haven't finished the demo. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I guess I kind of still feel like even though we learned a lot, even though there's a lot to say about Anthem, that in some sense my conclusion at the end of the demo is not actually a lot of progress from what I've been saying all along, which is still wait and see. Um, in in the sense of like, are you really going to be able to play solo the entire time and have fun and never feel super frustrated? I still feel like you have to wait and see. Is the role playing and the story and the connections that you build with the characters really going to deliver on what we expect from Bioware? Again, there are moments where I was I was like, I like Zoe the the mechanic. I think she's interesting and she tells you a little bit about her her son and how he wants to be a freelancer. And it's like it's almost there. Like, I'm starting to feel some attachment for some of these characters, but it's not quite there. Maybe it just needs more time. Or maybe maybe the characters aren't as strong as, as in prior Bioware games. Um, you know, how is the connectivity going to be? For some people, it's been really good. For some people, it's been really crap. So all of it still kind of gets thrown right back into that bucket of there's huge potential here, but it still needs more polish and probably needs more time. So I, I guess it's worth just... Uh, you know, just keeping an eye on. If you're if you're an undecided person, I don't know if this if what we've seen so far is going to make the difference. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think it's enough to disqualify it either. Now, uh, th- correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember like there's going to be an open demo next weekend, right? Oh yeah, and all of the progress from uh, this one will carry over for those who have played in this weekend's. Uh... So I would be interested to know what's going to happen with the open demo. Like, are the it uh, will. One, everyone's been saying, oh, you need to extend the VIP demo. Will they actually do that? And then if they do, what's the open demo going to be like? Because if, like, they were able to fix all of the things by the open demo, is there going to be actually a lot more positive regard? So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what the next couple of weeks is like. The end. So <laughs> I agree. Uh, 
with that, uh, Katie, uh, where can uh, where can the folks find you? Uh, don't no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a YouTube yes, channel. Yes, that's right. She doesn't have time for you peons anymore. <laughs> she has to go play the VVIP anthem demo with all the developers in their special developer YouTuber lounge. I'm getting flown out to Edmonton, <laughs> and I'm going to have all of the spoilers. <laughs> Oh, I like how that's your warden voice again. It came back. <laughs> My warden voice? Yeah, I remember when we were doing it like, I am the warden. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, no, you can find me at Gildrathon on YouTube where I talk about Dragon Age lore. You can find me on Gildrathon on Twitter where I talk about bullshit, I guess. <laughs> uh, and that's that's about it. Where, where can they find you, Jordan? Uh, they can find me on YouTube under The Exalted March. I've had lots of Anthem coverage out. Uh, I've got some stuff on the, some of the Codex entries. More Anthem stuff coming there. Uh, and then at The Exalted March on Reddit, Twitter, and Instagram as well. All right. Well, guys, with that, well, I think, uh, I don't know when this episode's coming out, but it might be weird. Either way, thrash <laughs> 